So if I put this router outdoors, I will definitely get better internet connection. However, when it rains, this router will break. But if I put this router outdoors, which is designed to go outdoors, everything's going to be great. All right, David Harry here. So in this video, I'm going to show you this 5G router by ZTE, which is designed to go outdoors. And obviously this means that it's weather sealed and stuff like that. So it's designed to handle rain and all the elements outdoors. However, as much as what I was joking in that intro, do not put a standard indoor router outdoors. Yes, it would perform better, but I will guarantee you, you will damage it putting it outdoors. Now, as far as this ZTE router is concerned that I've got here, this basically comes in two parts. Now, technically speaking, this bit here that goes outdoors, this is really a modem. However, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to refer to this as the outdoor router. And this one here is the indoor router. So basically, we have got two parts here. We have got the MC889, which is the outdoor router. And then we also have the T3000, which is the indoor router. Now, basically what happens here, these two things connect together. The outdoor router picks up your 5G and 4G signals and then transfers the data down to the T3000 internal Wi-Fi router. And then the T3000 gives you your indoor Wi-Fi and also it gives you some ethernet sockets as well. So in this video, I am going to do three things First thing is to do an unboxing and to show you how this all connects together. Now, although this is an outdoor router, the second thing that I will do is an indoor test with it. And that's just so that we can see what the difference is like using a router indoors compared to outdoors. And then the third thing that I'm going to do is to do the testing of the router outdoors, which is where it's supposed to go. And then I will do a comparison thing after I've done the testing so we can see all the differences. But before I kick into the video, if at any point you decide that you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And also, if you are into this stuff to do with like, you know, routers and internet and things like that, you may want to keep an eye on my channel. So maybe sub to the channel would be a good thing. And also I have a playlist called Router Mods, which is going to have all the stuff that I do with routers in it and stuff like that. And on the point of Router Mods, a quick word about this video's sponsor, who is routermods.co.uk. At routermods.co.uk, you will find a wide selection of all the latest wireless internet routers. These range from off-the-shelf routers by all the major brands through to professionally pre-modified routers. You can also send your router to Router Mods and have them professionally modify it for you. And they also have a comprehensive selection of antennas. So head over to routermods.co.uk for all your wireless internet needs. Okay, so the first things out of the box is the paperwork. And what we have here is a quick start guide for the outdoor router. We've got a quick start guide for the indoor router. Here, we've got a sheet with some stickers on and those stickers have got the passwords on for the outdoor router. Obviously, I've got that blurred. And then we've got this sheet here, which has got some basic information for one of the power supplies. Next thing are these two ethernet cables and these are both Cat5e. Now, one of them will be used to connect the two Two routers together and then you've got a spare here for such things like a computer to be plugged direct to the wireless router to its ethernet ports on the back now as far as power supplies are concerned we have two this one here is for the indoor router and this one here is for the outdoor router and there's the cable for the outdoor router one and what we are looking at now are all the fixtures and fittings for the outdoor router so basically what we've got is a bracket system which i will show in a little bit more details shortly when I put that on the router then we've also got a clip here so we can connect the bracket to a pole and stuff we've also got like this little torque screwdriver wrench thing here and then what we've got here are screws and roll plugs for mounting into a wall now what we are looking at is a 10 meter ethernet cable and this is obviously one of those flat types and this is also a cat 6 cable now moving on to the routers and this is the indoor router and this one has got four 
four antennas on it let me just lift these up and this is also a Wi-Fi 6 router now let me just show a few things here in fact if I just put it in that angle there as we will see four antennas there and then moving to the back of the router we have got four one gigabit Ethernet ports of which these last two here are also assignable as WAN ports and then we have got the power input there for the power supply and then what we've got here is the WPS button. Now this is the outdoor router and the first thing that you are going to notice is just how small it is, which is absolutely awesome because it's gonna mean that this router is about as unobtrusive as you can get for putting any type of router outside. Now let me just show you here. So height wise, that's about what? Seven and a half inches, about 19 centimeters. And then width wise, we're talking about four and a half inches around 11 centimeters. And then depth wise, we're talking about one and a half inches, about three centimeters or so. So like I say, that is really tiny. And then on the front of the router, we have got all of our LED indicators. So that's the power indicator, LAN indicator, network indicator, and then three LEDs here for the signal level. And then on the back of the router, we have got our four mounting holes here for the bracket system. And then looking at the bottom of the router, this is where we connect the ethernet cable to. Now I'll just explain very quickly what goes on here. We've got one screw hole here, one here, and they are used to hold in the plate that the ethernet cable is attached to. Again, I will show that close up in a second. Then we've also got a reset button here. And then on this side, we have got a USB-C port. Now that's not actually for anything like data, that's just for like diagnostics and stuff. And then above that, we have got a slot for the SIM card. Now what I'm gonna try and do here as best as I can is to show you how the ethernet cable connects in. Now, as you can see here, the ethernet cable is on this plate and part of it has got these rubber seals or gaskets on and that's just to make it watertight once it's all together. So what happens is we basically just pop that into the slot there and it can only go in one way and that one way will be dictated to by the actual ethernet port itself or the ethernet socket. So as we can see there, this is the right way around. So literally just push it in there and then we've got a screw on this side and a screw on this side that we just tighten in and then once those screws are tightened in that rubber seal and gasket system that was on the inside of this plate here will seal the unit up so that there's no way that rain can get inside of the router now the next thing that i'm going to do is to fix the bracket onto the back of the router now this has got four holes in it and they just line up with the back of the router however when you do this just make sure Sure that you've got it in a position where these bits are pointing down so that bit at the top there points down and then that bit at the bottom there points down as well and it's important that they point down because they latch onto another piece which is what we're going to use for attaching to either a pole or straight to your wall and in the package we get five of these screws and four of these are to put in the bracket and then the other one is to connect the bracket to the wall mount And what we are looking at now is the wall mount. Now, although I will not be going directly onto a wall, I still need to use the wall mount anyway, because this in conjunction with that metal ring that I'd shown earlier on, which I will show again, that is what's used to turn it into a pole mount. Now, the way that you orientate this is this way. So as we see here, the holes here are at the bottom of that slit bit. So that is the right way round. Also, we can definitely tell the right way to put this up because we have a hole here now that bit there with the hole definitely is at the top so make sure that's at the top as we see at the bottom here that doesn't have the screw hole in it and once again i'm just going to have to try as best as i can to show you how this all fits on so basically as we can see here this is the plate or the bracket on the back of the router and as i was saying before there's these two bits that point down now they actually just slide straight into the two holes one at the top there and one on the bottom here of this back plate or the wall plate so as we'll see here 
they literally will just slide straight in and there we go and it'll just stay in place like that itself however there is that hole there that i'd shown earlier on which is what we use for this other screw to go into so basically just pop that in there and tighten it up and then once the screw is in firmly as we will see now there is absolutely no way that that bracket is moving or coming off and then to pole mount the whole system what we have to do is use this metal ring here so what we do we unscrew and open up the metal ring and then what we've got here is a slot or a hole on this side of the bracket and one on this side so all we do we feed the metal ring into one side here and then bring it out on the other side like that and then what we do we just pop it back in there and then tighten it up and in fact i will just show you this from a different angle now okay so this angle might actually be a little bit easier for you to see exactly what's gone on here so as we can see the metal ring has just looped its way right the way through the back plate there then obviously we just use that to put onto a pole and then we tighten up a disc screw to tighten it onto a pole and now just to finish off i'm going to show you how we connect both of the routers together and that effectively all centralizes around this here which may initially look like it's just a power supply but it's not this is actually a poe or a power over ethernet injection system so let me show you what we do here so the first thing i'm going to do is to just connect the power cable to the power input on the supply unit here now of course i'm not going to plug this straight in now but at least that's all ready to be plugged straight into the wall for power once everything is actually all wired up now on this end of the power supply unit what we have got are two rj45 ethernet ports now the first one here as it says at the top it is the lan input now this one connects to the indoor wireless router and then this one here connects to the outdoor router so what we do we just simply take the other end of the ethernet cable that we've connected to the outdoor router and pop it into there where it says power lan out so let me just pop that in there first i'll just quickly explain what's going on here so this power supply unit is now sending power down the cable as well as communicating the data as well via ethernet so this is what we call poe or power over ethernet so at this point we are now all fully wired up for the outdoor router and then for the indoor router we're just going to use one of the ethernet cables that comes supplied with the router system we're going to pop one end of it into the LAN input on the power supply here. And then I'm going to connect the other end of that cable to one of the LAN ports on the router, like so. Then pop in the power supply for the indoor router. And then at this point, everything is all wired up as it should be. So once I have mounted my outdoor router outdoors and found the best location for my indoor router here, the simple thing to do then is just to plug that power supply into one of the power outlets on the wall and that power cable into another power outlet on the wall and then everything will be working. Okay, so now moving on to the testing and the first test is with the outdoor router but indoors so as we can see here i have got this placed right by a window and then when i go over onto the network information for the router as we can see here the router is not picking up 5g so what's important to note here is that although this obviously is a 5g router depending upon its position and obviously your location to your 5g cell towers it just may not pick up 5g now this is not a problem with the router this is just obviously down to signal strength and location and now that we know the location of the router and also we've seen the network information what i'm going to do now is to run a speed test and what i'm going to do is run this three times now i will speed through this because we don't want to sit here and watch this do this in real time but then what i'm going to do is take an average of the three passes of the speed test and then we will work out the router's average for its upload speed its download speed and also its latency now moving on to the outdoor position of the router and obviously this is ideally where it should be used as we can see here i've got this mounted on a pole outside now this just happens to be the pole that i use for mounting my outdoor antennas onto however this could be pole mounted or it could indeed be mounted to a wall and then switching over to the network information for the outdoor 
outdoor router once it is outdoors we can immediately see here that it is now picking up 5g so it is clear that placing the router outdoors allows it to pick up a better signal and therefore it is now picking up 5g and now that it is picking up 5g once the outdoor router is outside what i'm now going to do is run the speed test again and once again i'm going to run this three times through and then take averages of all three goes and once again i'm just going to speed up through this because once again it is going to be extremely boring watching three tests run through in real time and now that we have done all the testing I'm just going to go through the results but first of all just a quick recap as we can see on the screen right now these are the two positions that I've placed the outdoor router in so obviously on the left hand side that's the indoor position and on the right hand side that is the outdoor position and then just a quick recap for the network information for both positions and obviously on the left hand side there we have got the outdoor router but placed indoors on the right hand side we have got the outdoor router but placed outdoors and as we can clearly see there there are huge differences as in the main difference being when placed outdoors it is definitely picking up 5g now you might also notice here that it is tuned into different cell masts as well for 4g but that's just simply because the indoor position was optimized for the speed because if i had left it in a different position the speed would have gone down and it probably would have ended up picking up a different cell mast again for the 4g but moving on and these are probably the most important parts of the testing and these are the final speed test results so on the left hand side once again these are the indoor results and on the right hand side these are the outdoor results now if we look at the ping and latency first of all there really isn't that much difference across the average and the indoor results are 53 milliseconds and then the outdoor results are 50 54 milliseconds but once we get to see the speed test in itself as we can see the upload speed indoors is 12 megabits per second but the outdoor upload speed is slightly more than twice that at 25 megabits per second so obviously a fairly substantial difference there however when we move over onto the download speeds we can see an even better bigger improvement so the indoor position has got a download speed of an average of 66 megabits per second but when we go to the outdoor results they shoot right up to 274 megabits per second okay so to an end summary then and i will try and keep this as short as i can so there's a couple of things i need to mention here first thing is when i do these speed test videos i always have the computer connected with an ethernet cable so basically hard wired this is just a better way to get the most accurate results as opposed to doing it through wireless and stuff like that also you may have noticed that there are lights on the front of this router which you may not have noticed in the video the reason why that is is because these lights will switch off after a short time i think the idea behind that is just so that you don't have like a lot of glaring lights outside and stuff which may annoy your neighbors so although you may have thought that the lights were off because like the router was switched off the router was on it's just that the lights do switch off on their own accord now another thing that i need to make really clear are the performance results within this video or indeed the performance results of any video that I do where I'm using 5G or 4G routers. Now what I need to make clear is this, these routers will not be exactly the same for everybody as in these routers totally depend upon how good your signal is and that is quite often just simply down to how close you are to the 5G and the 4G cell towers. Now because of that, these things will change from person to person and things like obstructions outdoors or even indoors such as how many walls you've got before you can pick up a signal and stuff like that so just always remember that when you watch any videos like this it is going to be very different from person to person depending upon their physical location how they've got the router set up and indeed what type of router they are using anyways that should just about do it for this video and don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you've liked it also a sub to the channel will be 
absolutely amazing. And if you are into these types of things, check out my playlist called Router Mods. And also don't forget to go and visit routermods.co.uk for all of your wireless internet needs. I'm David Hardy. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.